Welcome back my fellow mobile gamers of YouTube, my name is Nimble Thor, and in this weekly mobile gaming recap I'm gonna be introducing you to the 4 most interesting mobile games I played last week, one of which is a true mobile gaming gem of a game that I think many of you actually haven't played yet. Now the games I've included in this episode range from a high quality sci-fi action shooter to a World War 2 themed FPS with a very large single player campaign, the best solitaire card game I've ever played on mobile, which is also a great casual game and a new text-based simulation farm RPG. So that's lots of great stuff to get to and let's just kick it off with World War Polygon which is a World War 2 themed first person shooter with a large single player campaign, daily zombie shooting missions and real time multiplayer. Now as we play through the campaign that starts on D-Day in 1944 we gradually unlock over 20 unique weapons and multiple armor pieces and grenades from loot boxes. These items can all be leveled up by acquiring enough of their parts and before entering a level we can customize our character by equipping a helmet, a vest and the three weapons we deem most relevant for the mission. The game is overall very well made and progressing through the single player campaign is actually surprisingly fun and I say that because I looked at this game and I saw the low poly art style and I thought yeah you know it's probably just gonna be a low quality indie game but that is not the case with this game. The only downside really is that the multiplayer game mode is dominated by high level players who already have the best weapons and gear which means competing in multiplayer is only possible at endgame. The good thing about this low poly art style though is that it allows the game to run on pretty much any device and the sleek UI is easy to navigate and it doesn't clutter the entire screen during combat which is also greatly appreciated. Now I did encounter a few glitches in the single player campaign but nothing game breaking that took away from my enjoyment of the game. And when it comes to the controls they also worked pretty decently but I did experience a few misclicks here and there. World War Polygon monetizes through relatively frequent advertising that are shown after finishing a level but we can remove these through just a single $3.99 in-air purchase. Although additional in-air purchases up to $19.99 does allow you to progress faster, the game can easily be enjoyed as a free player and there is, thankfully, no energy system. The game requires online access, takes up 520 megabytes of space and I think it's worth taking for a spin if you've been looking for a new single player World War 2 themed shooter. Today's next game is one of those games that you'll either love or hate depending on what type of player you are. The the name of the game is Farm RPG and it's a brand new cross-platform text-based RPG with simulation-like gameplay by Titan Conquest indie developer Magic and Wires. Now the game puts us in control of a small farm from which we can plant seeds to grow crops, craft new items, go fishing or explore the surrounding areas for crafting materials. Fish and crops can be sold in town for silver that we in turn use to buy new seeds or upgrade and expand our farm to become more efficient. There are multiple other options in town as well though such as for example being able to deposit deposit silver at the bank to gain a daily 1% interest which is really beneficial if you know you're gonna be away from this game for a couple of days just deposit all your silver into the bank and you'll have a bit of more silver when you get back to the game again. Every time we complete an action in farm RPG we gain XP in that profession which gradually lets us access new areas and items a bit like in Melvor Idol. Now some aspects of the game are semi idle such as growing crops after we planted seeds which honestly just happens automatically while other areas such as fishing and exploration actually require Require active play. And this mix creates a nice sense of constant progression whether you're actively playing the game or you're just gonna have to be away for a few minutes. While the game is still early in development and would definitely benefit from additional skills and just more gameplay elements overall, it already has a friendly community that we can engage with via a chat and the full gameplay loop is promising. Farm RPG monetizes through in-app purchases for a premium currency that we also earn some off for free by completing achievements. This currency can be used to enable quality of life upgrades and increase our progression speed but it's never necessary to enjoy the game. It requires online access, takes up only 54 megabyte of space and it's overall a very neat casual game that mixes farming and RPG gameplay elements to create a unique text based experience that I think is worth checking out if you like this genre. And now for one of my absolute favorite games this week and this is also the game that I introduced in the beginning of this video as a true mobile gaming gem of a game and the name of the game is Implosion Never Lose Hope and and it's a high quality level based sci-fi action game and it's developed by Cytus and Demo developer Ryak and it's also one of the best games within this genre on mobile. With a left side joystick and then right side buttons for normal attacks and abilities, we hack and slash our way through hordes of alien
million enemies in each level in this game using a huge blade as our primary weapon. Together with the awesome combo attacks, the smooth animations and the dark and gritty universe, this fast paced combat creates a fantastic gameplay experience that actually feels slightly Doom inspired. As we progress and uncover more of the game's story, we unlock new skills for our character and we can equip better arcs, which are permanent stat boosters that we get from completing levels. So that's how we grow stronger over time and deal with the increasingly stronger enemies and bosses. Although Implosion actually released all the way back in 2015, the graphics have aged very well and the game's entire story, including all conversations, are even fully voiced with excellent English voices. The touch controls are also nicely calibrated and I know many of you are gonna be happy about this one, there is even Bluetooth controller support. Implosion is a $199 premium game on iOS and on Android it's free to download and play mission 1.1 to 1.6 with a single $199 in a purchase then unlocking the remaining levels. The game can be played offline, takes up 2.1 gigabyte of space, which come to think of it must have made it one of the biggest games in 2015. I mean 2.1 gigabyte is actually still a lot here in 2021, so in 2015 it would have been absolutely massive. But it's an inexpensive gem of a mobile game that anyone fond of this genre is very likely to enjoy, so it is an easy recommendation. The next game is Fairy Solitaire Remastered and it's a high quality solitaire card game ported from PC that is perfect for when you just want to relax a bit. It features lots of content, several fun game modes and even a pet system that gives this game an almost RPG adventure feel to be honest. Now in the normal adventure game mode every level consists of 9 games of solitaire. Our objective in each of these games is to clear the entire board of cards by tapping cards that are either one higher or one lower than the face up card in our deck. Now when we eventually get stuck and we can't make any more moves we can tap our deck to draw a new card but here's the kicker though if we haven't emptied the board by the time our deck is empty we lose the game and then just move on to the next of these nine games. To make the gameplay a bit more interesting the game features several RPG like elements including cards that need to be unfrozen by tapping fire cards or even entire row of cards that are locked until we remove the plant whose roots keep it in place. And between levels we can even hatch and raise new pets or spend the currency we earn from playing levels on unlocking permanent power-ups. Fairy Solitaire Remastered has a bit of a unique monetization system actually because it's free to try but it then asks you to pay $9.99 if you want to continue playing the game after a 4 day trial. Surprisingly though nothing actually prevents you from continue playing for free but please support the developers if you enjoy the game. It can be played offline, takes up 99 megabytes of space and is a one of a kind solitaire card game with a neat simplistic art style and a gameplay experience that I think any fan of casual card games will enjoy, this is a must try. So what do you think guys, do you agree or disagree with my views and opinions on these games or which one of these games are you most likely to go play now? Let's discuss that in the comment section down below and while you're down there please leave a like to support the channel and if you enjoyed the video you can always subscribe for more mobile gaming goodness. And then until next time just keep gaming, stay awesome and I'll see you guys around. Together with the awesome auto, together <laughs> awesome auto, awesome combo, Fairy Solitaire Remastered is free to try but asks you to, asks you to, <laughs> it asks you to, wow, <laughs> it is so hot in here. Oh! Lost my phone.